Okay, what's up everybody? This is Scott here again with my next live trading video. Today is Monday, April 18th. And in this one here, I'll be conducting a bit of an experiment in this portfolio by placing a brand new trade on SPY here. This is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. And basically what I'm gonna be doing here is selling a short strangle every single expiration cycle. And also the way I'll be managing these trades is using a rolling methodology, which I'll be describing throughout this video. But essentially this kind of approach is meant to be more of a hands-off way of selling options in the stock market while still maintaining an adequate amount of risk and therefore still having the potential to make decent sized profits. And that's because a short strangle, which is basically a combination of selling both an out of the money call option along with an out of the money put option still gives you undefined risk, technically speaking. So if the underlying you're trading does decide to move significantly in one direction or the other, your losses can be quite significant. But that being said, that's also why I'm choosing to conduct this experiment here on SPY. This is a very well diversified broad market ETF, right? This is the S&P 500. So on a day to day basis or even on a year to year basis, this ETF does not tend to move by a whole lot. So trading this ETF should hopefully eliminate a lot of the random gigantic moves that you often see with individual stocks. And that's going to bode well for these kinds of strategies with undefined risk. But again, because we are still taking undefined risk with short strangles, the potential profits are still going to be pretty nice. And of course, also the profit potential with this kind of strategy is going to come with a very high chance of making a profit. And that's one of the main advantages of just selling options in general and also using a short strangle strategy. But as always, before we fully dive in here, in case you are brand new to the channel, again, my name is Scott. And I just want to let you know that you can also find me on Skillshare as well, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a full one month free trial. Okay, so now getting started here and for this kind of approach, there's not a whole lot of reason to be doing technical analysis because like I mentioned, we're going to be making these kinds of trades every single expiration cycle, no matter what. And then also these kinds of trades are going to be simple probability based trades, right? Essentially with a short strangle, this is a directionally neutral option selling strategy. So essentially all we're doing here is hoping that over the course of the expiration cycle, we want SPY to remain within a certain price range. And that's pretty much it. And that particular price range is going to be determined by just the deltas of the contracts I'm going to be selling. And specifically, I'm always going to sell a 16 delta short strangle. So now to give you an example of that, let's go over to the trade tab and take a look at the option chain here for SPY. And so for this trade, the most relevant uh, monthly expiration cycle is going to be the May expiration cycle with 32 days left to go. Typically when I sell options, I like to be roughly around 30 to maybe 45 days until expiration. So We'll unfold this tab here and scroll down a bit to the near at the money options. And as you can see down here, I do have a different position on SPY currently as well. In particular, I'm short the 460 strike call option, which is part of a poor man's cover call strategy. So that means I'm also long a far in the money call option in a much further dated expiration cycle. But for the purpose of this video, you can basically just ignore this position right here. And so like I mentioned, for each strangle I'm going to sell here, I'm going to pick my strikes to be at the 16 delta. So as you can see in this column here, these are the deltas of all these different option contracts. And basically the delta corresponds to the amount of risk you're taking on that specific contract. So for example, in this case here, if I sell this 459 strike call option, that means if the price of SPY moves by $1, then the price of this call option is going to move by about $16. And as you can see there, the delta did just change to 15. So delta is a very dynamic thing. It will change also when SPY does move, but at least to set up this position initially, I'm going to sell roughly around the 16 delta contracts on both sides. So again, that means I'm gonna sell the 459 strike call option here along with, if I scroll back up, along with the 407 strike put option, also with a 16 delta. So based on those deltas, we now have our price range in which we want SPY to stay within. Right, so if we come back to the charts to give you a visual sense of what that looks like, and we'll go ahead and zoom in a bit here on SPY. So again, my call strike is at 459, right around there. So for this trade, I want SPY to stay below this point. And then 407 is all the way actually down here. You can't even see it on my chart right now. And basically, we want SPY to stay above that point. So anywhere within this entire range is totally okay for SPY to trade within. And obviously, as you can see here, this is a pretty wide range. 
And that's what gives this trade a very high chance of making a profit. Now, also one thing I do want to point out is just how far down the 407 strike is compared to the 459 call strike, right? The call strike is a lot closer to the current trading price of SPY than the put strike. And this has to do with the concept of put skew, which is basically the fact that for most stocks and ETFs here, the put options trade at a higher price than the corresponding call options. And when I say corresponding call option, I'm referring to a call option that is the same distance away from the current stock price as the put option is. So for example, if we come back to the trade tab real quick, and if you look at the 459 strike call option again, right now with SPY trading at just under 439 bucks per share, that means this call option is about 20 bucks away, or the strike of the call option is about 20 bucks away from SPY currently. And the current price of this call option is about 160 bucks. But now if you scroll back up and go to 20 bucks away on the put side, which places you at the 419 strike put option, take a look at the price of this contract. It's almost 470 bucks, way, way greater. So this option here is the same distance away as the call option, but it's trading at a much, much higher price. And again, this is the definition of put skew. And the reason why it exists is because most of the time people fear the downside moves of the stock market, right? When stocks go down, most people lose money because most people are long in the market. And oftentimes when stocks do go down, they go down by a significant amount. So ultimately the market in general prices in much more risk to the downside. And that's why put options have a much higher price. And so for the purpose of this short strangle though, in order to get the risk basically completely neutral, at least on trade entry, to make this a completely directionally neutral strategy, we have to get the deltas to be the same on both the call and the put. And so that's why on the put side here, I can sell my put option much further away because again, due to put skew, the 16 delta contract is much further down. And also one more thing to mention here is that the reason why I'm choosing a 16 delta contract on both sides here is because that makes the range in between the strikes about a one standard deviation range. And that's a concept you would learn about in a statistics class, but for the purpose of this video, all it means is the chance of making a full profit on this trade is about 68%. So with that being said, I'm gonna right click on this 407 strike put option here and go to sell and then strangle. And that brings up a sell order down below, gonna sell one contract of the 459 strike call option along with the 407 strike put option and the total credit I will collect for putting on this position is about $445. So we'll lock in that price and then go to confirm and send. Now the buying power effect for this trade is about 6,600 bucks. And that's primarily due to the fact that SPY is a very expensive product. But for this portfolio, that's still under 5% of the entire account value, which is where I like to be. So the risk here on this trade is fine. And now we'll go to send. And there we go, just got filled at 445, awesome. Great, and so the next step here is to create my automatic closing order for this trade. So now I'm going to right click on the put option again and go to buy and strangle. And here we go, this is my closing order to buy back both contracts. And typically I like to do so for half price of the starting credit. So if my starting credit was 445, then half of that is about 220, just running down a little bit there. And then we'll make it a GTC order so it's always in place and confirm and send that one as well. Awesome, so now at this point, I'm fully entered into the position. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the way I'm going to manage these trades in particular is using a rolling methodology. So basically what that means is, let's say SPY decides to sell off rather significantly over the course of this trade here, and it begins to get very close to my put strike. And also as a result of that, the delta on this contract is going to increase substantially as well, and therefore increase the risk on this side of the trade substantially too. So in order to counteract the losses I would face on the put side here, what I would do is on the call side, I would roll down the contract, which basically means I would buy back the initial call option and then sell a new call option with a strike much closer to where SPY is trading. And I would do this for an additional credit on top of the entire starting credit. Moreover, the delta on whichever call option I decide to sell will serve to offset the delta on the put option. And the net effect there is it would slow down the losses if SPY continues to move lower and lower and lower. And then conversely, if SPY decided to recover very significantly and then get very close to my new call strike, or perhaps also my original call strike, then at that point, I would roll up the put side. And eventually, in some cases, I might have to roll things to the point where I have a short straddle on, where basically the call and the put have the same strike. And perhaps even at that point, I might have to go inverted 
which means the call strike would actually be below the put strike at that point, and that's what gives it the name an inverted strangle. And then finally, once we get close to the expiration date, roughly about two to three weeks out, at that point, I'm going to roll both contracts, wherever they might be at that point, to the next expiration cycle. And again, when I do that, I will collect additional credit on top of my starting credit, and also I can change my strikes a bit and reduce risk if need be. And don't worry if that was all a bit confusing because as these trades do play out, and as these kinds of situations do come up, I'll be showing you guys exactly what I'm doing in these live trading videos going forward. But for right now with me just making this trade, obviously there's nothing to do yet on this position, but once SPY does start to move and perhaps get close to one of my strikes here, at that point, it might be time to make an adjustment. And so with that being said, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you have questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every single week, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.